Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters guest. So I know when you all woke up this morning, you had a burning desire to learn more about golf. <laughs> so it's a very broad topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into two areas. Number one, I'm going to talk about the history of golf, specifically uh, the majors. And then we're going to segue over and talk about some apparel and then talk about the equipment. So on the majors, you have four majors. So in, in football, you have the Super Bowl. You have the number one event, and it's just huge, right? Everybody, has, everybody knows what the Super Bowl is. But in golf, if you're a golf fan, you have four Super Bowls. It's just incredible. You can't get enough of it. And each of those Super Bowls, each of those majors, has four days to enjoy. It is just incredible. So it starts off in the spring with the Masters. And if you think about it, I, one of my first memories of golf was the Masters on CBS. And I can just hear uh, Pat Summerall saying it. And you look at your color TV, and all the green colors come in. And it is just, uh, it's, it's just spring. And a few times in my life, I've gone to Augusta National, and I've walked the fairways. And it truly is just like that. It is springtime. You breathe in the air. And you look at the trees, and you look at the brilliant azaleas, and it's just life uh, the way life should be. It is just um, vivid. It is incredible. So to go from that to the next major of the year, which is the U.S. Open, and to put it in terms of uh, maybe uh, the seasons, it is hot summer. It is miserable. And with the U.S. Open, it's like uh, children playing a men's game. And here you have uh, the best players in the world uh, struggling on the most difficult courses. I am talking the rough is, is like this, and these poor guys are just hacking it out. And I think what happens to us, us, us normal people, us mortals, when we see these guys struggling so much in, this, in these very difficult conditions, um, it's very interesting, and that's why we watch it. So to go from there, we move to the British Open. So if you're truly into golf, uh, the British Open is referred to as the Open, right? And the Open takes place in the United Kingdom, and it takes place either in England or it takes place in Scotland. So in Scotland, a lot of times, um, golfers and, you know, like if you talk to golfers on the side, they'll just say, oh, that's like a parking lot. Like, that's like an asphalt parking lot. And I've walked St. Andrews, and St. Andrews is like an asphalt parking lot in some ways. It is brown, it is barren, and the wind is blowing, it is cold, and but what happens at St. Andrews is it has so much history. It's been there for over 120 years, and it's just fascinating. And it's a whole different way of playing golf. Now, as far as the majors go, we go to the fourth major of the season, and that's the PGA Championship. In a lot of ways, it's like the ugly duck thing. It is just, um, you know, by the time that the players get to the fourth major of the season, everybody's kind of tired. Uh, the fourth major of the season, the PGH Championship, takes place in some of the newer courses around the United States. And by that time, it's just kind of blah. But, you know, we all get through it. And the bottom line is a, a major is a major is a major. So really, in the end, a uh, professional golfer, their whole career is determined by how many majors they win. So you want to win the PGA Championship, too. Okay. So we've talked about the majors. And I want to have a little bit of conversation about apparel. Golf, as you guys might imagine, is all between your ears. It is all metal. So when you appear on the first tee, you have to be dressed somewhat like a player, right? You have to have your branded hat. You have to have a lightweight sweater on, maybe, and some comfortable slacks. Because um, how you approach the first tee really determines how you're going to play golf. Apparel? I had Ryan volunteer as a caddy. Here you go, caddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the driver. The, uh, the biggest stick in the bag. And if you hit it right, maybe 260, 270, the pros maybe hit it over 300, 100 yards. But driver, um, grip, shaft, club head, the basics of the driver. So you want to hit it all the way down the fairway, uh, 300 yards, let's say. And now you get to the irons. Now on the irons, you can see uh, similar to the driver, right? You have, you have your grip, you have your shaft, and you have your club head. Now let's take a look at the club head. You have your heel, you have your toe, you have your sole, 
So in a lot of ways, it sounds like a shoe. And if you, if you look, if you look on the uh, iron here, it's lofted. And so you have different degrees of elevation. So as you get closer to the green, you want to hit the ball higher so it drops into the hole very softly. So that's that's a seven iron. Then we get all the way up to a, to a sand wedge. And that, that's very lofted, which will make the ball go quite a bit higher. Now, there's a saying in golf, and the saying goes like this. You drive for show, but, okay, <laughs> you putt for dough. <laughs> and and that's, that's all there is right here. Back and forth, back and forth. This is where the whole game is for the tour professionals. And it's all about having clear thoughts in your head, not getting nervous, back and forth, back and forth. You'll see the tour professionals practicing hours and hours just going on the practice screen, back and forth, back and forth. Because when it gets down to it, it's all about the stick right here, the putter. So to recap, we talked about the history of golf, specifically the majors, and then we went into a little segue, and we talked about some apparel, and then we talked about equipment. So thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Mm -hmm.